So the next talk will be about the macrophage switch improving nanoparticle biodistribution, and it will be given by uh, Joy Wolf Wolfram from the Mayo Clinic, and we are very curious about the macrophage switch. So hi everyone, my name is Joy Wolfram and uh, I'm a faculty member at Mayo Clinic and an affiliate faculty member at the Houston Methodist Research Institute. And both of these institutions are top hospitals in the United States. And today I'll be talking about the macrophage switch improving nanoparticle biodistribution. Um, and before I go into the details of this project, I'd like to briefly summarize the research focus in my group. And I think it can be summarized in three words. The first is translational. So everything we do has a clear goal to benefit patients. The second is transformative. We try to transform the way we practice medicine and the way we do research. And one of the ways we do this is through a multidisciplinary approach. So we have people with different backgrounds that all come together um, to solve medical problems. And the third is transport, and transport can mean a lot of different things, but for instance, the movement of drugs inside the body. And in the field of drug delivery, we believe that treatment of disease is fundamentally a problem of drug distribution or transport. And the ultimate goal in this field is to exclusively direct and confine therapeutic agents to diseased tissue. And we know that all drugs have this therapeutic window, which is a range of drug concentrations. And if you go below it, you don't see any efficacy. And if you go above it, you have side effects. So if we could find a way to specifically transport drugs to an intended location, we could expand the therapeutic window and remove the upper threshold. And to address these issues, we use nanomedicine. And we all know that nanodelivery systems can improve the biodistribution of conventional drugs. And typically, this leads to increased therapeutic efficacy and reduced side effects. However, only around 1% of the systemically injected nanoparticle dose usually gets to the intended location, while up to 99% go to the liver and spleen due to these resident macrophages that are designed to recognize, engulf, and destroy foreign materials. And these uh, macrophages form the mononuclear phagocyte system. And on this slide, you see a simplified analogy of drug delivery, where the car represents the drug delivery system and the road, the biological environment. And in the middle, you see this fire pit that symbolizes these macrophages in the liver and spleen. And in order to improve drug delivery, we can either upgrade the drug delivery system, and if the car is fast enough, perhaps it can jump over the fire pit. And we have several examples of doing this, um, in the lab creating um, sophisticated drug delivery systems. But a less common approach to improve drug delivery is to change the biological environment. And this is something that I'm passionate about and we'll be talking about today. So in a hypothetical example, if we could block nanoparticle uptake in the liver and spleen by, for instance, 1%, that's not a lot. In the best case scenario, we could increase tumor accumulation by 100%. So this means that a small reduction in what goes to the mononuclear phagocyte system could have major implications for therapeutic efficacy. So we asked, what if we could find a macrophage switch, something to temporarily block the activity of macrophages, specifically block them from taking up nanoparticles? And to find this switch, we uh, decided to go with the drug repositioning approach. So we asked whether there are drugs already clinically approved, um, that prevent macrophages from taking up nanoparticles. And we did a cell-based screening, and we found that chloroquine, an anti-malarial drug, was the most effective at blocking nanoparticle uptake. And we looked at several different nanoparticles. This is just one example of liposomes, which is a major category of clinically approved nanodrugs. And these are control macrophages, three different cell lines, including CUFA cells, which are the resident macrophages in the liver. And we see that these fluorescent liposomes are taken up by cells in large quantities after three hours. And then when we pretreat the cells with chloroquine, we see a substantial reduction in uptake. And we also made sure that at these concentrations, chloroquine was not killing the cells. 
So this was an inactivation not caused by cell death. But then we asked, does chloroquine also block nanoparticle uptake in cancer cells? Because of course this would be counterproductive. And we looked at three different cancer cell lines, MDA, MB231 breast cancer cells, MIAPACA2 pancreatic cancer cells, and H358 lung cancer cells, and we saw that chloroquine didn't really have an effect. So perhaps um, this is macrophage specific. So then we asked, what would be the effect of pre-treating mice with chloroquine on the biodistribution of nanoparticles? And for this, we wanted to use a dose that was clinically relevant. So we used the dose translation from human to animal studies um, following FDA guidelines, which are based on body surface area. And we looked at uh, liposome accumulation in control mice at various time points in the plasma, liver, and spleen. And the goal was to identify a time point where liver accumulation was higher than plasma accumulation, because we're trying to look at a phenomenon of inhibiting liver uptake, so we don't want the majority of the liposomes to still be in the circulation. And we also used the positive control, which is a macrophage depletion agent called Clodrolib. It has previously been described in the literature. If you give it to mice 24 hours later, all the macrophages in the liver are eliminated. However, this is not a clinically relevant approach because it's very toxic. But the mice that were pretreated with this depletion agent had a much higher plasma to liver accumulation ratio. So we saw a lot more liposomes in the circulation and a lot less in the liver, um, again indicating that the mononuclear phagocyte system is a major barrier for nano delivery. Then when we pretreated the mice with chloroquine, we saw a similar trend the plasma liver accumulation ratio increased, but in this case, we also saw an improvement in the plasma spleen accumulation ratio. So we had less in the plasma and spleen and more in the circulation. So then we asked what would be the effect on chloroquine on tumor accumulation of liposomes, and for this we used an MBA, MDA MB231 orthotopic breast cancer model. And we found that 0.7% of the detected dose, that's less than the injected dose, is in the tumor, again stating that we don't really get much of what we inject in the intended location. And then for the positive control, we saw that tumor accumulation did increase when we depleted the macrophages, and similar with chloroquine, and this is the six-hour time point. So now we showed that chloroquine works in vivo for one type of nanoparticle, liposomes, for one type of indication, tumor accumulation. So we asked whether this could have broader implications. So we looked at discoidal silicon particles um, that have previously been described to accumulate in the lungs due to fluid dynamics. And we asked, can chloroquine pretreatment improve the organotropic accumulation of these silicon particles in the lungs? And indeed, we found that the mice pretreated with chloroquine had higher accumulation in the blood, less in the liver, and we did increase lung accumulation, which these particles are designed to um, accumulate in this organ. So now, since we've shown that chloroquine works in vitro and in vivo, we just wanted to make sure that it wasn't killing the macrophages in the mice, because this would be toxic. So we stained the macrophages here in green, in the liver and spleen, the nuclei in blue, and we see with the macrophage depletion agent, all the macrophages are eliminated from the liver. There's a decrease in the spleen, but with chloroquine, it looks very similar to the control group suggesting that it's a macrophage inactivation and not um, cell death. So, of course, next we were curious about what could be the potential mechanism by which this drug um, blocks nanoparticle accumulation in, in uh, macrophages. So we did LCMS studies looking at Kupfer cells that were treated with chloroquine, and we saw that distinct pathways were activated. In particular, we found that all these endocytosis proteins were only present in the control. And specifically, we were interested in PCOM because it's an important protein involved in um, clathrin-mediated uptake. And we know that clathrin is one of the common pathways by which nanoparticles enter cells. And there's two other um, proteins in these clathrin-coated vesicles, um, clathrin and the AP2 complex. And previous studies have shown that if we suppress PCOM, we actually block clathrin-mediated endocytosis. So then we just wanted to confirm these results by Western blots. So we looked at these three proteins, and indeed we found that there was <clears throat> a significant reduction in PCOM in response to chloroquine, while the other two proteins in the clathrin-coated vesicles were not affected. So suggesting that perhaps this spe specific reduction of this, this PCOM protein is one, one way by which the drug um, blocks nanoparticle uptake in macrophages. So with that being said, I want to conclude. So, um, 
we talked about the fact that the mononuclear phagocyte system is a major barrier for localized drug delivery. Um, pharmacological inactivation of resident macrophages in the liver and spleen through a drug repositioning strategy with chloroquine reduced nanoparticle accumulation in the liver and spleen and increased tumorotropic accumulation of liposomes and organotropic deposition of silicon particles in the lungs and a potential mechanism is suppression of PCOL. So I want to acknowledge the people that made this possible, especially Dr. Mauro Ferrari, who's a visionary leader at the Houston Methodist Hospital, and our funding sources, NIH, DOD, and my personal funding from Victoria Stiftelsen and Nyland Smachorn in Finland. I want to thank you for your attention. I want to encourage students, postdocs, and faculty to come and talk to me. Uh, Mayo Clinic is ranked the best hospital in the United States. I'm at the Florida location. We're five minutes from the beach. We're always looking for people who want to change the world. So please add me on LinkedIn and follow my scientific updates on my new Twitter account at Wolfram at Joy. And then I also want to say, so I just started a new lab at Mayo Clinic. And in addition to um, working with synthetic nanoparticles, a major interest is biological nanoparticles, um, specifically extracellular vesicles. And actually right now we have an open postdoc position. So if anyone's interested in doing groundbreaking research in uh, exosomes and microvesicles, please come and talk to me. And we're always open to have um, PhD exchange students come to my lab for one year. So if you're interested in that, please also reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are perfectly on time. And we have uh, time for two, two or three questions. Sorry. Me neither. No, 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 actually, I, I haven't seen him as <laughs> I'll well. be short, sorry. sorry. So um, I see the concept of blocking macrophage uptake, but this is a, the mechanism that the body has of getting rid of particles. So where do they go? And is there any potentially toxic effect of doing this? So um, they stay longer in circulation. That means that they have more chance of entering um, the tumor. Eventually, when the effect wears off, they will probably go to the liver and spleen if they haven't gone to other organs. Is there side effects? Um, well, chloroquine is given for malaria treatment. It was in, uh, approved in the 1940s. Um, but it's also given for autoimmune conditions. So there's patients that take this drug every single day throughout their lives. So in that sense, I think it's, uh, the safety profile is pretty well known. Thank you. Um, if I recall well, chloroquine, chloroquine, another one of the effects that it does is that uh, it inhibits the acidification of uh, uh, the lysosomal compartment. Uh, so have you checked if one of the other effects that you see, it's the fact that lysosomes are not as effective uh, as they normally are? Um, we haven't checked, but I know there's, there's other people looking at using chloroquine for um, lysosomal escape and preventing, for instance, sRNA from degrading. One last question. Yeah, very, very short question. Uh, just uh, about the changing capture cells, the phenotype of um, different expression of different receptors. The, do you have any idea if the macrophage be become more uh, pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory? Yeah, it's a great question. We didn't look at that, but it's something to, to look into. Thank you. Thank you.